So one of the things you don't always see unless you're testing guns in a stressful environment, as in at a two-gun match on the clock, are things like what happened to us on this day where we were trying to run a simple pistol stage with my P38. I have a P38 here. It is a USGI bringback. It has no import marks on it. It's all matching AC42, so Walther manufacturer. Gun is in excellent condition and has been very reliable to me in general. That said, I shot the stage, everything went fine. Ian shoots the stage, and it's just one disaster after another. The first run he makes, the gun actually breaks. In fact, fails entirely. And that's going to be a lesson later in the video. Second stage, he has all sorts of short stroke problems where the gun's not cycling properly. Third attempt, we have a problem where we didn't reset the stage. We forgot to tape the darn target. So on the fourth try, finally, we get through the stage properly with Ian. We kept giving him alibis because, well, the first three times were really things that were outside of his control. And normally when a gun fails at the two-gun match, we consider that a done deal. But being this was a borrowed gun and it really didn't impact the match in general, we were already pretty much near the bottom of the scores using bolt-action rifles this day. We wanted to get a video out of this, and there was a lot to learn from this particular situation, so stay tuned. Shooter will start standing behind this table, pistol fully loaded and staged on the table. At buzzer, Shooter will retrieve his pistol and engage the paper target, a paper target, with three rounds. The shooter will then engage the static steel plate with one hit. He will then ground his pistol safely in that little box there, move around the table without uh, sweeping himself with his pistol while moving down range, move the steel to the next target stand. He'll then run back to his pistol, reacquire his pistol, engage that piece of paper with three rounds, or three hits, and then the steel. He will repeat this until the, all the paper has been neutralized and the final steel has been neutralized. All three hits on the paper targets counts for score, and there's a 90 second par time. Bellissimo. Well. Carl! Your gun broke! Got a break. Extractor broke. That's not the extractor. Or it came loose. Ejector. That's the, no, that's the, well. that's the open case, the loaded chamber indicator. Okay, well, something broke in there. All right. Are All you right. finished? Anyway, time. Uh, no, I'm part out. With one mic. Because of this? Yeah. First of all, I'd like to thank our friends at CN Arsenal for providing this diagram. Well, they didn't really provide it. I found it on their site, and it was perfect for my needs, so I kind of took it for this video. I hope you guys don't mind. I'm assuming you don't, but thank you nonetheless. There are certain bad ideas in firearms design that just never seem to die, and one of them is the concept of a loaded chamber indicator. The idea being that you should be able to visually or tactically identify if a round is in the chamber of your gun when the bolt is shut or the slide is closed. Well, you see that in the PO8 Luger, you see it in the P38, you see it in lots of guns, even modern ones, and um, more often than not, they don't work. And even if they are working, you don't want to trust them because you don't know if they're working. So, for example, the gun says that it's loaded, what if that is just stuck and it's not loaded and it's actually empty and you now need it for combat? Or worse, what if it actually is loaded and indicates that it's not loaded because something broke and now you think the gun is not loaded and it's quote unquote safe and therefore you make the mistake of not identifying that it's actually clear by opening the action and visually identifying the chamber to be empty. So this idea is something you shouldn't trust and it's unfortunately on a number of guns, the P38 being one of them. 
In this instance, uh, when Ian was running the slide to try and fix some issues, apparently he's pulled the uh, spring clip that holds the rear sight and loaded chamber indicator off or something, I don't know, but the loaded chamber indicator had jumped its rails and extended itself uh, forward in the gun, so full, more forward than it should have been in the slide, and therefore would not allow him to cycle the gun and chamber around. It was actually forcing the gun to stay out of battery. So to get the gun running again, I pulled the spring clip off, completely removed the loaded chamber indicator out of the gun. It is a part that does not need to be there. In fact, you can run the gun gleefully and blissfully without it. So we essentially took this bad idea out of the gun and then gave it back to him ready to go. So um, it is interesting to note that this was excluded from the later post-war iteration of the Walther P38 called the P4. And I'm going to talk more about that later. So once we pulled the loaded chamber indicator out, uh, we gave the gun back to Ian, and he tried to make a second attempt at his stage run. Weak ammo or something. Now on this run, what we're going to have you do... <laughs> Make him explain the course of fire to you. I can see holes in the target. We did not tape. So another thing to consider when using old-timey guns, World War II or otherwise, is that it may not work with all forms of commercially available ammunition. In this instance, this P-38 will happily consume steel-cased Tula ammunition or any of that steel-cased garbage, but would not work with Ian's provided blazer brass. It just did not cycle the gun properly and it wouldn't work, which is weird because typically Tula tends to be underpowered and we would expect blazer to be a little more powerful than Tula, but mm, not this time. The Tula works great in the P-38 and just does not work with blazer brass at all. So after this uh, third attempt, I provided Ian my Tula ammunition. He was trying to be kind by bringing brass cased ammunition for a borrowed gun, but that was not the right answer in this instance, and I knew that Tula worked. So I gave him Tula ammunition, and lo and behold, we finally got through his fourth attempt successfully using Tula ammunition and the loaded chamber indicator removed. So a bunch of lessons learned here, and we're going to have some conclusions at the end. So you brought blazer brass. Yes, I deliberately did not bring Tula because I didn't want to cause problems like we had at Hard as Hell with steel case craptastic Tula ammo. Which is funny because I happen to know this P38 runs Tula just fine. I brought Tula, I didn't say anything to you, it didn't occur to me. And my gun ran fine, my ammo, no problems, no malfunctions, everything's cool. Yep. The first time you tried to shoot the stage you started having short stroking problems. In the process of running the slide quite violently to clear a short stroke, which you should, uh, the P38 has this unique design in which there's this spring clip that yep. sits on the slide. The spring clip protects all the internals, the firing pin, or the, the firing pin uh, some other springs, and this, this part right here, which is the loaded chamber indicator. 
This sits in there like this. And when there's a cartridge in the chamber, it's pushed back. And you should see this little piece poke out on the back of the frame. And anyone can look at the pistol at any time and theoretically know if the gun's loaded or not. Right. Well, while you were doing that, the spring clip must have popped loose or something. And this popped forward outside of its guide and caused you to have a malfunction that was not clearable in the stage. Right. So I claimed a mulligan because broken borrowed gun and shot it again. And the second time, I had a whole bunch more issues with my brass case ammo uh, and timed out again. And so then I claimed another mulligan because this was getting old and really obnoxious and just shot it with your shit-tastic Tula ammo, which runs in this pistol, uh, and then actually managed to finish the stage. So you finish the stage. So the lessons that are be learned here are this. When you're running old-timey guns, things ammunition, break. Things go wrong. Things and ammunition finishing. choices matter. Uh, ammunition choices all, always matter, yeah. but uh, yeah, things go wrong. Another thing to lesson to be learned is if you don't need an extraneous part in your gun that has no value to whatsoever, don't put it in the design. And by the way, this is not the only problem I've seen with the loaded chamber indicator on the P38. More often than not, dirt and debris gets in there and they get stuck showing a loaded chamber when it's not loaded anyway. And you have to flip them and then they go back into position. And I have heard of them popping up but never seen it before have now that's for sure the point is this is not necessary in the gun at all in fact we took i used a key off my keychain pried the spring off and got it out for essentially in the field p38 repair yeah pulled this out threw it in my bag and then you shot fine and i suspect you're probably going to leave that out this is staying out there was a uh, german there was a legit german army reason to put that in but it's not exactly applicable to you well i don't know that loaded chamber indicators are ever a good idea and let me tell you this is a good conversation to be had first of all they can have a false reading Sure. So they could have a false reading saying the chamber is loaded when it's not. That, that said, uh, they generally cannot have a false reading saying that it is empty when it's actually loaded. They could if the tip uh, broke off. If the whole thing physically breaks. Well, sure. the but. point is, this is, a, to me, to me, this is an indication of, I, I don't want to trust this ever. And so I need to know the condition of my gun because I loaded it, or I did a press check, and I know what's going on in there. Sure. This type of mal mal excuse me, mechanical device that's supposed to tell me if it's loaded or not, could put me either in a situation where the gun's not loaded when I think it is, or worse, is loaded when I don't think it is. Now, that being said, that's not there for you, the soldier who has that pistol. That's there for your commanding officer to be able to see if your pistol is loaded or not. Much like uh, re things like the Trapdoor Springfield have external cocking levers that look like hammers. Well, not the Trapdoor, but... No, there uh, were guns that were designed Guns that way. replacing it. Yep. Uh, they, they didn't need an external hammer, but they were given one anyway, so that some, a third party could observe the gun and visually see its status. And that's what something like this is like. And by the way, the P08 Luger, which the P38 replaced, had a loaded chamber indicator as well that popped up, mm -hmm. also prone to problems. They kind of always are, but so. people keep putting them in because there are ulterior motives to do so. So I take, it makes sense when taken into historical context, but in terms of you as the user, if you yeah, can take you it out, that thing in there. Bye bye. Well, I don't want it. I, I doubt you're going to throw it away. No, it's going to go in my box of parts. <laughs> but I'm not going to use the gun anymore with this in it, just because it's unnecessary. I know the condition of my gun, and I'm not worried about. I I am worried about having an extraneous part causing a malfunction. Right. So lots of things learned from this one stage and one match. Just trying to use one P38, and we wanted to bring that to you. Here's a picture, a close-up of the actual slide. There is blood rust on this gun that uh, ran down the side of the slide and etched itself into the slide. Uh, someone had a real bad day with this gun, and it's a real piece of history in that regard. One thing I also want to bring up is I'm going to link to uh, Larry Vicker's video about the Walther P4 at the end of this, because you're going to find that when they made the post-war P38 variation called the P4, they actually mitigated all the problems that we experienced at this stage. We They got rid of the safety. They turned it into a decocker only. They got rid of that ridiculous uh, spring clip that held the rear sight firing pin and loaded chamber indicator together and replaced it with a Phillips screw. So by And they got rid of the loaded chamber indicator entirely as well. So it's interesting to note that the stuff we learned at these matches do have real world realities to them and people in Germany post-war figured that out themselves and they made an improved version of the P38 called the P4 that would have mitigated all the problems you experienced on this particular day. Guys, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Please subscribe and share the videos with your friends. Thanks a lot.